Okay, to finish that story, what happened, um, I told this um, student, I said, what did you do that for? Didn't you read the label? The label says, sprinkle it, broadcast. She said, well, I'm used to doing it that way. I said, never do that. Read the label on every container that somebody gives you and put it on per uh, direction. Because if you read it down on the directions, it'll say it's against the law to veer from these directions. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes what they do, they went from a formula of pellet uh, of meal to pellet, you know, and so you apply them in different method, and that's when we got in the habit of putting them underneath the plants, because the dogs don't go underneath looking for it, but when they're right out there where they see it, they eat it. Cats will eat them too, okay. And you know, Thomas said something about methaldehyde. That was a material that used to be in baguette which was a snail bait, and they found that poison. They don't want us to use it anymore, and so they came out with different materials, and Corey's is still on the market, and it's uh, made out of sodium something or other, which is some kind of a salt, I guess, and that's what they use. And then they came out, and this is what we started using, it's called Sluggo, and uh, this is iron sulfate. Phosphate, iron phosphate. And um, we use this a lot and it is very effective. And um, you have to use these like in lettuce, um, zucchini, any, any of these plants, uh, snails and slug. So you, a lot of times, don't wait till they start chewing on your plants. As soon as you plant them, they, these, these um, snails and slugs, they eat tender, nice, soft material. They don't want the hard, woody material. So as soon as you put it in, it's ripe for them and they, they'll finish you off, okay? So bear that in mind. Also, if it rains on these things, a lot of time they're ineffective. So you have to kind of figure when to use them and when you water. So you don't want to water right after because otherwise you're just washing out what you put on. They're less effective. So you got to watch the irrigation too then? Yeah. If you got sprayers yeah, and You usually turn them off okay. for, for a day. And, uh, you know, a lot of your clients don't know how to turn their sprinklers off and on. And it, that's a whole other um, lecture, but I'll tell you this. It's good to keep the fingers of your client out of their sprinkler clock. Because they can foul it up more than anything. I had one little old lady ones, you needed a screwdriver to turn this little piece and to turn something, you know, and so I would do that for and fix it. So I go in another time, the clock is all fouled up. I said, have you been in here? Oh no, and I look at, it's all scratched where the screwdriver, her screwdriver scratched it all over, you know. So I told the daughter, can we put a lock on this? And only when I come, I'll, I'll take care of it. So anyway, um, that, that's that. And then when it comes to spraying, you could use, uh, Thomas brought this in. This is like for uh, fruit trees and roses. It's a sulfur dust. They've been using sulfur. Um, what else do they use? What other? Well, copper uh, compounds? Copper no. And copper. For, uh, for sulfur fungicide. and copper have been fungicides and been, I guess they go back to biblical times, you know. So you can't go wrong with them, you know. And some of them, they, they, uh, there are some materials mixed with oil, uh, sulfur oil, it's called, but, um, as a dormant spray. But they came out with these dormant sprays now that are, are they vegetable or what are they? Some of them are vegetable, other are like petroleum based. Yeah. Sure. And, and they're recommending a lot of the vegetable base more than the petroleum base now. And this is when you get rid of uh, wintered over insects that are still on the plant, like mealybug and mites and these things. And a lot of time they get in the crevices on um, trees. I, I've seen them on um, um, magnolias. They get in the little 
where the branches come out. And all you got to do is keep uh -huh. about two or three of them in there, and then they breed, and the next year you, they're all over the place. You know, so you have to douse those uh, pretty good. Um, when we talk about mites, I don't know if you people know what mites are. The main mite that I have had to deal with is spider mite. We call them red spider. And so you'll know, if you ever look at them under a microscope, they are a spider. You get the legs and the, they look like a spider. But when you see them on a plant, you don't see them. They're so tiny, they're like a pinprick. That's what they look like. So my way, and I was taught this years ago, you get a piece of paper, clear white paper, and put it underneath the branch, bang the branch like that, and then you look, if these little print tricks are moving and running all over or moving around, that's them. I mean, if you wanted to, you could get a, a magnifying glass. I don't even know if that'll work, but a microscope will work, because that's where I've seen them, you know. And then you know you have them. And if you bang it and you had two or three moving, that's not bad. One day I did a, a pine tree. Must have had a thousand <laughs> on one piece of paper. No wonder the pine, pine tree look yellow. You know, they were just sucking like mad off that tree. And uh, I was recommended by a friend of mine that did tree work, but he didn't have a spray license, and I had one. So I went out and I sprayed. And, you know, I was new at this. I was very skeptical. You know, and this he told me what he wanted me to use, and which was. Uh, a good spray that I believed in and sure enough I, I went back about um, three weeks later I was going to give him another shot and put the paper under there there were none zero and, oh, I keep going to different branches and I told the lady I don't think I'm gonna have to spray again but I'll check you in a, another month in another month I got in there the trees all brown I mean green all beautiful. And they said, man, alive. Yeah, I never saw so many insects on, on one tree and how it re came back oh. so quickly, you know. So you have to be able to uh, identify and it, you should take Malcolm's class. He teaches this extensively and you have to learn these insects if you want to control them. You don't kill them all. If the, if the material we use killed them all, the spray material people would be out of business. You can, if you're lucky if you can control them, you know. So uh, along that line, I will say to you, the best gardener practice is to put plants in that don't get these insects or diseases, you know. I, like I've said in uh, past videos, you know, put in a plant you don't have to take care of and it looks beautiful. That's good. But if you put in a plant that you have to put this on it, and put that on it, and do this and check and do that, it's not cost effective. You know, and you're growing it artificially is what you're doing. So there are places that we take care of, we don't even spray because we put in, and then all of a sudden, it's just so you know, it doesn't go on forever. You put this plant in, it's been beautiful for 25 years. All of a sudden, you've got an infestation it's never had before, and you knock it down, and from then on, you've got some on it forever. That it's the way the weather changes and everything is changing, and bugs and everything that things that didn't have it now have it. Because a lot of the insects that we have now came from somewhere else. They come on planes, ships, people. We travel all over. And that's how all these diseases and insects get around, you know. We can't blame the birds for everything. You know, we, we like to blame them, okay? Um, we got much more time? Okay. Um, before I go into any other material, I'd like to show you, this here is a pump sprayer, and this is what we use uh, if you have little jobs. This part here comes off. And 
you're putting your material in there, and then you put so much water, you read your uh, label, and bring it up to where it says, and then you close it, and then you, you pump it. And I don't like these. They're, you know, if you go indoors or up on a deck or something, you may want to take one of these. And, and then you just pump it, and it, it puts water, the air in there, and then you got your wand, and you can spray up underneath the plants. That's one advantage. You know, you don't have to bend over as much. You can take that tip and mm. push it up. You can spray down and around. It's a great tool for that. But the, this little guy here is what? One and a half or two gallons at the most. Mm. So you're carrying it. We have some that used to be three and four gallons. Now, four gallons times eight gallons, uh, 32 pounds. You're oh. lugging that around, oh. you know? So that's when they came out with these little hose end spray. This one happens to be a feeder. So it's got a different tip on the on the front. Otherwise, it comes out here just like it would, you know, the one for spraying, got a fine mist just like it comes out on, on that one there. And you put so much in there and fill it up with water. But make sure when you use this type, you read its directions, because there are some, you put the concentrate in here. So then when the water comes through, it just takes so much out. And those are the ultimate that, sprayer. That dilutes it as it and comes that out at a certain concentration. Down. And that way you don't waste anything because the, the concentrate's all there. Take this off, put it back in your jug, and, and, and it's good to go because you maybe only took that much out. Ah. But when you use the other type, you put the water in there, you, and just like this one, you got to use it all up. You know, you should, this one uh, or this one, if you're going to spray a few more gardens, it'd be okay to leave it, but you don't leave it for a couple days or a week or a month all mixed up. It comes apart and jams up all the little parts inside. Okay? So these are called hose end sprayers, and this is a pump sprayer. Uh, we have backpack sprayers, we have power sprayers, we, we have all these different. Uh, method that uh, you may find some of these little guys that you huh. squeeze like that. That's good for one plant. You know, you wouldn't want to do a garden with this. You, you, your hand, you'd have carpal tunnel by the end of the day. You just go like that all day long. You know, but this is good for one little plant or a couple of house plants. Yeah, what do you want to get out a big sprayer like this thing for? And you just can use something like that. Okay, um, then the other thing we have is this one here. You're almost done? Okay, we'll pick this up another time. Okay, see you later.